Sew Country, and I'm so excited to be participating in another sewing marathon here on YouTube. For today's marathon, I will be sewing up this pattern here. This is the Crypt Carrier from Crosswind Patterns. I've made a couple different versions of this pattern to kind of decide which way I felt the best with. I did make this as a clear vinyl with jelly. I did use a PVC which I like to use in patterns like this. I feel like when I use TPU, sometimes I have like crumpling, like it won't stay up. So this one holds its shape. I did want to show you this because I thought this would be a perfect trick or treat bag for kids. This one, I just put the grab handle. I did not put the crossbody strap, but if you wanted to put the D rings for a crossbody strap and a grab handle, the kids could carry this, get their candy. And then when they get tired, which of course they will, the mom or dad can slip it on and wear it as a crossbody so it's even easier for them to carry. So consider this also for a trick-or-treat bag with clear vinyl. I think that would be adorable. I think the kids would love that. So that's another way you can make this bag. So two options there I wanted to show you. First thing you need to know is that I will be changing a few things in the pattern. I will let you know which parts I'm changing just so you are clear as to where I'm deviating so you can follow the pattern if you want or you can follow my tutorial. The first thing is I want to tell you that in the pattern there is instructions and a template for reverse applique that you would put right here. That adds a really cute touch to it. Also in the pattern you can make this either a crossbody, a backpack, or both. I will be making my version today as a crossbody, and I'm also going to put a grab handle here on top. I love the way grab handles look, so I just thought it'd be a cute addition. This version here is vinyl. They give you several tips to make sure that you can sew it on a domestic machine. I had no trouble sewing it on a domestic machine. In my version today, I am using a quilting cotton just because I found a print I really liked and I wanted to do it that way. Also in the pattern, this bag is made with a drop-in lining. I love drop-in linings. I do love them. But with a drop-in lining, when you have a gusset that comes down here, I struggle. I'm not the best with it. Now, I do want to improve that technique, so I'm still practicing. But I didn't feel like that I had it right enough to be able to do a tutorial on it. I felt like I didn't have the best practices and tips to give you. So I didn't feel like it'd be beneficial. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm making this as a bound bag. The designer does do some versions of this pattern as a bound bag, so I'm not completely going against what she wants or anything. She does this as well. This is a hack that she uses also. So for mine, I'm using quilting cotton. I'm binding it. I'm adding a handle. I'm still going to leave it as an option for a crossbody, but I'm not putting anything on the back for a backpack, but you can make this as a backpack and it's super cute. But now we're going to go ahead and jump in and start talking about the pieces we need and how we can get this bag sewn together. So for this bag, we do not need a lot of hardware. There's not a lot of pieces to cut out. It comes together really quick, the version that I'm doing. So we definitely need our D-rings and D-ring connectors. I am adding those. So I have two one-inch D-rings. You're going to fold that just like you normally would because we're going to put it right there in the gusset. You will use the pattern measurements to cut this piece out, and then you're just going to fold the long edges to the middle. We're not going to do a double fold there, so we just fold those edges in. You can interface this however you want. I'm using a quilt on cotton, but you can use vinyl. I was able to sew this vinyl bag on a domestic machine with no problems. After you get it cut and folded, you just put your D-ring on there, clip it, and then you set it aside. So two of those for your crossbody. If you're doing the backpack, you will cut out four so you can have D-rings here, and then you will have your backpack strap here as well. It's a different measurement for that piece. I am also going to be using two swivel hooks to connect my crossbody strap. I have my zipper my zipper is coming from So Majestic. That is pretty much who I use for all my zippers. You can see the zipper wraps around that top gusset or top zipper panels pieces. 
I'm going to have two zipper pulls just because I like it. You can use one zipper pull or you can use two, your choice. I'm not putting these on yet. I like to sew the zipper panels on before I attach my pull, so I'm gonna wait on that. For the gusset, the bottom gusset and the zipper pieces, I'm going to be using a vinyl. This is just a cheap vinyl that I've had for years. I don't even know where I got it from, but when you have this vinyl on interface, oh my gosh, it is so stretchy. It just pulls and pulls. So if I would have used that vinyl without interfacing, this gusset would have been a mess. It would have been stretching the entire time I was sewing it and I would not get a proper fit. So I used some Sofuse Plus in black from Castine Handcrafted. I got this from her at SME. And so I put that on there, just one layer. It takes away that stretch completely. No stretch at all now. It does like provide some more support and stability without any extra bulk. So you can see it's super thin. I'm not adding foam to this. You could add foam. The pattern tells you how to add the foam and keep it out of your seam allowance so you don't have pr trouble sewing it on the domestic, but I'm just not doing that. I feel like this will be plenty, the vinyl with the Sew Fuse Plus. So I have two of these pieces. You have the measurements for that in your pattern. That'll be this top portion here, front and back. That'll be what the zipper goes onto first. Also with this version, I am doing that grab handle. I'm going to be putting it on the back zipper panel piece. I will top stitch down both long edges of this piece to finish it and then I will add this piece after I get the zipper sewn onto those zipper panels. I'm also going to have two lining pieces for that same zipper gusset piece cut the same size. I'm going to have a bottom gusset that's going to be the part that goes the way around that's again going to be out of that vinyl for the exterior with the Sofuse Plus on the back. I have one lining piece. All of my lining pieces are a cotton woven. I do have this interfaced with a medium weight interfacing equivalent to a SF-101. That is what I'm using here. You could use a waterproof canvas without any interfacing if you wanted to. If you're using a cotton woven, I definitely suggest some interfacing on it. Those pieces will complete our gusset portion of the bag. Let's talk about our front and back panel. For my panel, I'm using this gorgeous fabric. This is a cotton woven. This is from JNR Edwards. I did choose to quilt this. I have foam on the back, no other interfacing. I like to quilt foam for three main reasons. One, it looks cute. It just adds a different look to it. Two, it provides a little bit more structure and stability. Those extra stitches kind of give it a little bit more just support in the fabric. And the last reason is if you're using a fusible foam, quilting it will prevent you from getting the wrinkling that sometimes happens when you birth a bag. So that just makes it look a little bit better in my opinion. And I think it's going to look so gorgeous to have that quilting and that gusset. I think it's just going to be a stunning bag. So this is the back piece. For the front piece, I did go ahead and quilt it, but I also added this hand tag. The tag is from Heartwood and Hive. It is super cute. I love them. So what I did was I stitched the tag onto a piece of vinyl. The vinyl's from Jenner Edwards. Then I added the rivets to rivet the bag into place. So you can see I sewed, then riveted those four corners. Just gives it a cute look. So that'll be the front of the bag. That's those pieces. For the lining, I have the same cotton woven pieces interfaced. Same size for the front and back panels. For the inside, we are going to be adding a slip pocket and credit card slots. So let's go over the pieces we need for that. We need a front slip pocket piece. It's that way, sorry, I had it upside down. We need our actual credit card slots. You're gonna cut out the long piece. On the pattern piece, you have the lines drawn already on the pattern piece. So you just transfer them over to your fabric. Here is my top. If your print is directional, make sure you have the top marked or noted. Your first line, you will fold it right sides together. Your second line, the second mark you make, you'll fold it wrong sides together. Third, again, right sides. Fourth, wrong sides. And then you just fold it up accordion style and then you have your credit card slots. So that's how we do that. If you want, after you get it folded, you can top stitch 
both of those. And the other piece you'll need is your slip pocket lining. I am not interfacing any of these pieces because they're going to be attached onto the lining and I don't feel like they need any extra bulk there. So I'm leaving them uninterfaced and in the same print that I'm doing the exterior. So the same print from Jane R. Edwards. The only other thing I'll need is my binding. I haven't cut that yet, but I will cut that and I'm going to just cut it, I think, in the same print as this. Probably will cut it at about an inch and three quarters, maybe two inches wide. And I'll cut a long piece just so I have plenty of extra to sew on. The last thing I'll need, and I'm thinking I'm going to use webbing, is for my crossbody strap. I'm not for sure. I might break down at the end and make a strap. But either way, it's going to be a one inch strap. So I'll either use one inch webbing or I will cut a piece of fabric four inches wide to double fold that and make my crossbody strap. So that's all we need to get started in making this bag. You're going to be amazed at how quick this comes together. And although this shape is, you know, definitely called the Crypt Carrier for a reason, it definitely looks like that and has that shape, this bag can be made for so many different things. I think it'll be great for panels. If you have a panel, I think that would be such a cool design for your clear vinyl. Definitely would look great. So many options. So don't just consider this a Halloween bag. This bag can serve any holiday, any use, any time. It's a great shape and it just looks gorgeous. The step one with this bag is going to be working on the gusset. So I want to make the gusset entirely. I'm going to pull out my zipper, my two zipper pulls, and the zipper gusset pieces. Two lining, two exterior. I'm also going to go ahead and pull out that grab handle that I have folded and I'll just top stitch down both sides of those to attach it after I attach the zipper to the zipper panels. With mine where I'm making a bound bag, I'm going to do this just like typical. So I'll have my lining right sides up. I'll put my zipper tape right sides up. Okay, I want to make sure whenever I'm doing this that my zipper, I have a little bit of overhang on both sides. That's just going to make it easier for me to add the pull onto it since my pulls are not attached already. At this point, you can baste this in place. Or you can go ahead and make a traditional zipper sandwich by taking your exterior piece and have right sides facing the right sides of the zipper so it'll be right sides down. Everything's right sides together with the exterior piece. Your zipper is right sides together. Your lining is right sides together with that exterior piece. If you're doing it like the pattern, you would be doing the zipper gusset for the exterior without the lining pieces. That's a drop in lining. You kind of construct your exterior and you construct your lining separately and then you just drop the lining actually into the exterior. It's a great technique. I'm just not good enough to show it on camera yet, but I hopefully will. At some point, I'll keep practicing. For me, we're going to go ahead and do it this way. So I'm going to sew both sides of the zipper tape to the lining and exterior pieces. After I get them attached, I will pull them wrong sides together and go ahead and top stitch on them as well. This is how the first side panel for the zipper gusset looks. You can see that I sewed these right sides together and then turned them wrong sides together and top stitched down all sides. I didn't do that side yet just because I haven't got to it. It looks the same on the back. I have found that whenever I'm going to top stitch, if I go ahead and baste these raw sides together first, pulling the lining and the exterior together and go ahead and doing that, then I'm able to get a better top stitch on this section. I think it's just because I stabilize these pieces and I can pull them easier and they stay together. But you can see how clean that looks on the back. It's just been working better for me. So I suggest you try that the next time you make a zipper gusset and see if that tip helps you any. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the other side of this off camera. And when I come back, I will show you that I already have both pieces connected and the zipper pull attached. So I went ahead and sewed both sides of this zipper gusset and I trimmed the extra zipper off. I also, that little grab handle I made, I top stitched all around the edges of it. When I was off camera, I decided I was kind of figuring out the placement. Since this is not in the pattern, the grab handle, I really, 
didn't want to mess it up too bad. When I made my first one, I made the mistake of putting the handle in the center, like centering it against both long edges, but that was a mistake because we're adding our seam allowance back here so it looked like it was too far back. So I tried to take it forward just a little bit and what I did was I measured my halfway point on this zipper and the handle and I knew I wanted it to have a little bit of a lift but I also wanted to have it kind of tacked down nice like that. So I just kind of figured out what looked best to me so I don't really have good measurements to give you on that because I don't even know if it'll look good at the end. I, I just kind of like eyeballed it because it may look really bad at the end of this video. <laughs> we'll see. So after I figured out kind of my basic measurements, I went ahead and used my puncher to make two holes in my gusset, two holes in here. I'm not going to press these down just yet, but I'm going to use the rivets to kind of anchor it in place so that when I'm sewing around, I don't have too much shifting. Things are at least a little bit secure on that. So I'm going to now sew down this handle. I'm also going to pull out my two D-rings and attach these. I don't like my D-rings to be hanging out too far, but I also want to make sure that it doesn't hit the hardware when I'm using the proper seam allowance. So I'll have a little bit hanging off for both security and just for aesthetics as well. So here's what I have at this point. I have the handle on so far it looks okay. We'll see how it looks when I get the bag attached. When you do a handle like this, here's the problem. If you have any shifting when you're attaching that this gusset to your front or back panel, it can make it appear off-centered. So it's going to be really important for me to try to make sure that I don't have shifting and I keep everything intact when I'm sewing those two together so this doesn't look really weird at the end. I have the D-rings attached. They're great. They're out of my seam allowance. I know I'm okay there. The next thing I need to do is pull out that bottom gusset exterior and lining. What I do now is I take that exterior bottom gusset piece and I just place it right sides together with the zipper gusset panels that I just sewed. You can sew this one at a time. You can baste it and then add your lining, but since it's just a short distance, I'm going to go ahead and grab my lining and put my lining right sides together with my lining piece. I'm going to line up the edges here and I'll probably just put a clip or two in place so things don't shift while I'm sewing it. And I'm going to sew this with the full seam allowance given in the pattern. Make sure that you have your D-ring pushed up. It's not like flipping down so your needle doesn't hit it and just be careful that you don't hit it whenever you're sewing these pieces all together. Make sure also to backstitch at the beginning and the end. After I sew this, I'm going to pull the two bottom gussets, the exterior and the lining, wrong sides together and then top stitch that seam. So I have that sewed on. Now you can see that my D-ring, I used the exterior fabric. Would it have looked better if I used the vinyl? Probably. So I did choose to use the cotton woven purposefully. You can choose to do whatever you want to do on that one. Now that that side's done, I'm going to go ahead and take my exterior and flip it around so that I place it right sides together with the exterior. The lining will go the opposite way and it'll be right sides together with the lining. So if you look, I'm just gonna hold these up so you can see, this is what it looks like there at the bottom. I'm gonna match these edges up and put a clip there just like I did the last time. Sew it with that same seam allowance given the pattern and then top stitch just like normal and that will complete the gusset. For me, I am going to baste the two um, bottom gussets together the exterior and the lining. I just feel like it helps it whenever I'm attaching it to the main panels. There's just not as much shifting then and things go a little bit easier. So I will do that also.
Okay, so my gusset is complete. I went ahead and attached those rivets. I did go ahead and mark my center and quarter marks. So first thing I did was I pushed those seams together and made a mark at the top and the bottom. Then I took those top and bottom marks, put them together, and then made two marks on the side. I did that on both sides of the gusset. So I'm gonna set this aside. I also cut out my strips of binding, so I have that prepared. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the inside pieces so that I can attach everything together. So I have my credit card slots. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to top stitch these two, they call them heels, the two parts that stand up. So what you do is you just pull everything else out of the way. So you can just top stitch right there. This is more decorative. I'm, you know, like it might add a little bit of support, but it's mainly kind of decorative so you can skip that step but it looks pretty if you do it so now that I got those top stitch what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this front slip pocket piece and I'm going to lay it right sides together I'm going to match up the top and the side you can see there's a lot of gap a lot of overhang I should say I will trim off that overhang but I'm going to go ahead and sew everything first and I'll trim it off at the end so on this side I'm just going to sew down that side we're working on the right side we have these two pieces right sides together using that seam allowance in the pattern I'll put those two together when I'm going over those credit card slots I want to make sure that I'm careful not to like let my foot push them down so I'll go slowly there. Back stitch at the top and the bottom. I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch on that side piece just to keep, I have the seam going there and so I'll just kinda get that top stitch where everything lays nice and flat. I'm going to take my slip pocket lining I'm going to lay it right sides down, matching up that top and the sides. Now at this point what I'll do is I'm just going to sew right across the top of this. You're going to use your seam allowance given the pattern and you're just going to back stitch at the beginning at the end and that is going to connect these two pieces together. I'm going to separate those two flip it back and if you want I'm going to go ahead and just finger press this seam open I could take over the iron but I'm a little lazy right at the moment okay and I am just going to top stitch all the way across here because I think it'll look nice hold everything in place top stitch there I'm going to grab my scissors to trim that bottom portion and then we'll attach it to the lining piece I'm going to take out my two lining pieces and go ahead and line this slip pocket credit card slot piece up with the bottom. So line it up at the bottom edge and it should fit pretty perfectly. If you got your seam allowance is correct, mine's a little crooked at the moment. Let me shift that into place. There. And now I'm going to base all around, leaving this top open, of course, because that's going to be an actual slip pocket. I'm going to trim up my overhang and my threads on this and then that's it for the lining. That's all I'm doing. Credit card slots, slip pocket. I have my two exterior pieces that I had already done previously. My binding and my gusset. It's time to put all of this together and finish our bag. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take one lining piece and one exterior piece and just clip them wrong sides together. I am choosing to put my pocket piece against the back of my bag. So I'm putting mine there. You can choose whichever way you want to put yours. I am going to go ahead and baste all around this. I'm going to do an eighth of an inch just to get it locked into place so this is all one unit. I've already done this with the front. So there's the front and there is the lining. And so I have that one ready to go. I will do the two marks at the top of the bottom. Then I'll also fold it in half just like this and get my center marks on the sides as well. So that'll be really considered your quarter marks. So I'm going to mark all that up, sew this, and then we will start adding the gusset to this bag. So now that we have our exteriors and our linings ready, it's time to attach the gusset. Now I have sewn a lot of gusseted bags. The way this one's constructed is so cool. 
So here's my front. There's my corner marks. This is going to be the back of my gusset. So I'm going to be attaching the front to the bag. I'm going to do it right sides together. So I'm going to flip this inside out first. Make sure you're not attaching your back if you have the handle like me. Go to the center marking on the bottom and I'm going to attach that, those two center marks first. Just put a clip there. I'm going to continue clipping to the edge of the front panel. The pattern gives us a measurement that you're going to measure in on the bottom side of this front and back. I drew a line there. That's where I'm going to start sewing. I'm actually going to put my needle down right there where I made that mark and go all the way over and end my sewing, have my needle down in this mark that I made also, and then back stitch there. I'm not going to sew any past those two marks. So we're going to do that first. I am going to use the seam allowance given in the pattern. Going to line everything up. My needle is exactly where it needs to be, and I'm going to sew this strip first. First step. We're going to repeat that same step for the other side. Typically what I would do is I would go ahead and clip everything around and have this gusset completely sewn on and bound before I'd attach the back. But the designer says that this is the easier way to do it and I'm going to trust them on that that they have that, <laughs> that they figured that out. So I'm now going to do that same thing flip it over, come to the back. So here is the right side of my exterior. I'm going to take it and just match it exactly right sides together with that center mark on the bottom. And I make my marks on the lining so that way I can see them easier from the way I'm sewing because I'm sewing it from the lining side. That's how I'm sewing. So if you put it on your exterior, you won't be able to see it as good. So again, I'm going to fit this under my machine. So with the proper seam allowance, putting my needle down exactly in that first mark that I made and then sewing over to the second mark I made back stitching. So now this is what I have, this really cool shape here, you can see. What you do at this point is so cool and it helps give you that wonderful shape. You're going to get your scissors and you're going to go directly to where that line is. Let me go on this other side so you can see it a little bit better. So here's my line. On my gusset only, I'm right where that line is and I'm going to make a snip. My snip is going to be, and she tells you exactly how long your snip should be, but you don't want it in your seam allowance at all. You don't want to snip any stitches. You want it below your seam allowance. But put your scissors right there in line with that mark you drew on your gusset only. You're not cutting into your main panel and you're just going to make a snip. I don't know if you can see that very well on camera. I'll make mine a little bit bigger. That one's a little too short. That Making that mark is going to be able to allow you to get that perfect box or perfect square corner even though you're still having it round here. It's cute. I love that. I'm going to use that for other patterns as well. Do the same thing on this side and then also over here. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and finish it like I normally would. I'm going to match up all my center marks. Okay, so now I have this. I'm going to clip around the rest of the way. See how this bottom's kind of tucked in? I'm going to pull that out. It's going to work just fine. You have a little bit of overhang there, but that's okay because it's going to make an adorable bag once you're done. The gusset actually fits really well on this the first, well, the several times I made it. I had no problems with my gusset just fitting beautifully. Look at that beautifully fitting <laughs> gusset. You can see that is so gorgeous. It's going to be so cute. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sewing where those previous stitches ended whenever I sewed on the bottom. So I'll start sewing there and just sew all the way around. I prefer to sew it like this. So my gusset will be against the bed and my panel will be up. You could sew it the other way if you wanted to. I just feel like I have a bigger chance of things slipping that way, but it really is a personal preference. I have not found that one way 
gives you a better result than the other. I feel like it's just what you feel comfortable with. So let's go ahead and sew all around with the seam allowance given the pattern. Make sure you back stitch when you start and stop. Before I start sewing this, I do want to let you know the pattern designer gives a recommendation of using staples around here because where you're doing curves and sometimes a top fit, you can have the gusso or the panel slipping. So that's a great tip. I don't have staples. I've never used them. So I'm just going to use clips and go slow. Use my stiletto if I need to to hold things in place. You could also use glue. I do that lots of times. So there's some options. Hand basing also would work if you're someone who likes to hand baste your bags. That's an option too. Since I got this done, before I add the binding, before I trim any seams or do anything else, I'm going to push this out to see if I made any mistakes, if I need to go around any other places or correct anything first. Everything is looking great. I love it. The corners look good. I'll have to poke out just a little bit, but that looks wonderful. I haven't pushed it out of the way, but you can see when I do, my shape is good around the top as well. So I'm going to go ahead, push this back in. The binding is going to be sewn on right sides together. I take what, how I get my binding going is I fold under one raw edge. So you can see I just fold that to the wrong side. And then I start wherever I want. I'll probably just start on the side. And I don't clip on my binding or anything. Actually, I'll be sewing it this way. So my binding raw edge is with the raw edge of the bag. You can sew your binding back on with the seam allowance given in the pattern. So you're going to follow everything all the way around. You're not going to be sewing over that seam you already did. You're going to be going right in a line with it. So we'll sew the binding on and then we'll show you the next step. So I'm just going to sew all the way around the bag and attach this binding the same way I just did my other row of stitching. Here I am back at the beginning of where I started my binding. So I want to make sure I have a little bit of overhang. Just go ahead and cut that. And then I'm going to fold that raw edge just the same way back as I did the other. In a perfect world, you'll have those kind of butted up to each other so they're not overlapping. They're just right against each other. And that way you have that bulk offset there but not having an extremely long tail. Okay, now my binding's attached. The next thing I do now is I flip it all the right way. And I'll typically start on a straight edge and I take that raw end, I fold it under, and then I fold that folded edge to where it just meets my previous stitching. If you fold and have that folded edge just where your previous stitching is, then you sew all the way around with that same seam allowance and you catch both sides. So the key is just making sure first that you fold everything the right way. After you do that, then you'll be careful with your sewing to make sure you keep that accurate seam allowance. And you can see where my corners are a little bunchy. That's because I didn't use the bias cut. This is just a straight, no stretch really on it. It's okay. It's not a big deal, but it's just, it'll have a little bit of a wrinkle there. On your bulkier parts, like right here is this seam. The benefit of having single fold is that I can even kind of make that fold a little bit like a bigger piece to catch it perfectly. So I never have to worry about like, oh, well, this doesn't catch or this won't fix, like it won't cover everything. You get to adjust it so that it covers exactly. So I always prefer to do a single fold homemade binding. I'm going to continue clipping this around once I get this all clipped, I'll make sure I check and make sure everything looks good. And then I will sew it again with that same seam allowance. Then that side is done. One side is done. But guess what? I have to do it all over for the other side here. So I'm not going to do this all on camera. It will take forever for you to watch and it will be kind of boring. 
So binding does take extra time. If you feel confident, go ahead and do the drop-in lining and you would avoid all these extra steps that I'm doing with the binding. The drop-in lining is just a little tricky around this area here, getting it underneath your machine around this area. If you wanted, you could even get down as far as you could with a flatbed machine. If you have a cylinder or arm machine, it ain't going to be a problem. And you can even hand sew around there to get it all connected. So there is options for doing this pattern even quicker than the way I'm doing it here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish folding this over, sew this binding on, and do that same process all the way around. And then I'll come back when it's time to unzip and pop it out and we'll see if my bag looks great or if I made any mistakes on it. So I have both sides bound and finished, and I'm going to be honest with you and say I don't know if I've ever been more nervous to turn a bag right sides out on camera. Um, I did a couple things differently than the pattern, and since I'm not a pattern designer, it makes me extremely nervous. Like one thing while I was sewing, I realized, you know, I should have attached that handle before... I added the lining to the gusset just to the exterior so that wouldn't have been shown. Now is that a huge deal? No, it's okay. But it just lets you know that I don't have the, the bond for designing. So where I switched this to a bound bag, I'm like, oh my gosh, will it turn out okay? Will there be any mistakes? And plus, I don't want to let the designer down and make a horrible bag. So I hope it's okay. I hope she is okay with how I did and everything. And let's just Keep our fingers crossed that this turns out okay and I did not destroy this bag. So let's see how it looks. Here is my finished bag. Now I can tell definitely the bonding does create some problems here in the gusset. You can feel that ridge there and it doesn't poke out as clear as it would if we had done a drop in lining. But since I'm not the best with drop-in linings, my drop-in lining bag would probably look a lot worse than this. So my shape looks great. The gusset, I did really good there. I like that. Let's see how the back looks. Again, we have that binding where that is a thick seam kind of coming in there. So what I'll do is I will manipulate that by pushing that seam out and probably putting a clip in there to kind of teach that vinyl the way I want it to lay and kind of flatten that seam a little bit just where it's a little bulky is why it's sticking out. So now that we have our bag completed, what I need to do is I need to do um, the crossbody strap. I decided to keep it simple and I'm just going to use some matching webbing. I want to save some of this exterior fabric to try to make a matching wallet for the bag. So I'm going to take an adjustable bar, just feed one end of the webbing through and I'm going to then fold it under and then just fold that raw end under, attach it to the webbing, put a clip there to hold it, add a swivel hook, take the other end of that webbing, feed it back through again, I want to make sure I did not get that twisted. Pull that through. Add the other swivel hook to the other end and again fold those raw edges under. And then put a clip on the si that side. And then all I'll do is I'll throw, sew two lines of stitches on this end to encase that raw edge. Come back over here, do the same thing to the raw edges right there with that adjustable bar. And then my strap is done and completely adjustable. 
And so that way I have a crossbody strap if you want to wear it that way, or I have a grab handle if you want to wear it this way. I actually feel like this would be a good travel, like for cosmetics, a cute little travel bag personally, just grab it and go. But that was just a thought. So I have my crossbody strap. I'll sew that off camera so you don't have to watch that. And super cute. I love the pattern. I definitely be making the pattern more. I already have like two more of these cut out because I've been making several of them. If you're interested in learning how to do a drop-in lining with me, we'll try to tackle it together. But otherwise, I want to give a huge thanks to the designer, Crosswind Patterns, for letting me make this tutorial. I'm going to have the link for where you can buy this pattern in my description. I'm also going to have the link for where you can get the fabric and where you can get these tags. I love these tags are so cute. I'll put a link for this zipper in there. Other than that, thank you once again for watching another video of mine. Thank you for joining me in the Halloween Marathon. We have two more marathons coming up in the month of October. So I hope you come back for those. If you have any questions or comments about this pattern, if you have any tutorials you want to see me do next, let me know. And I hope you guys have a great day creating something beautiful and fun in your sewing room. Thank you.